Well, good evening. It's good to be here tonight. And we're close to Christmas, aren't we? And everybody's ready? Everybody's prepared? Okay. I'm going to be reading tonight from Galatians chapter 4. And uh, beginning in verse 4. Now, I don't know how good your memory is, but according to my notes, I spoke from this same passage of Scripture on the 14th day of December last year in this church. I hope you don't remember, okay? <laughs> <laughs> when I was pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Pecola, I had a dear lady. She noted in her Bible every time I used that particular scripture, and she always made it a point to remind me that I had preached from that on this certain day. So uh, <coughs> repetition actually is good for us, right? Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Amen. I'm intrigued by the phrase, the fullness of time. It was the perfect time. It was God's time. And it was the time that we needed him most. It was a time that was fulfilled prophetically because the prophets had foretold he was coming. Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus came, prophesied that a son would be born and that he would bear our sins. And he finishes that verse by saying, the government shall be upon his shoulders. Keep that in mind. It was a time not only prophetically and politically, but physically, because people were hurting. They were hurting. They needed help. Don't we need help today? Amen. So God sent forth his son. And I like to compare the first coming with the second coming of Jesus. His first coming was personal. God came himself and he is coming again Amen. himself it was a coming the first time by promise and it is a coming the second time by promise for he is coming again acts chapter 1 verse 11 this same jesus which is taken up from you, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. It also was unexpected. Nobody was ready for it, but the timing was perfect. We're not ready for the second coming, are we? But it's coming, and we need to be expecting it. But the world does not expect it. It also, in its likeness, was a blessing when Jesus came the first time. And what a glorious blessing it will be when Jesus comes again. Also, there is a likeness because the Scripture says that Jesus will be a stone of stumbling to some. And so he was in his first coming. And so will he be in his second coming. There is a unlikeness in the very person of the coming of Jesus. He came the first time as a humble babe born in a manger. But he is coming the second time as a glorious reigning king. His treatment the first time was harsh, but his treatment the second time for those who believe will welcome his return. 
I know all of you, like I, are concerned about what's happening in Israel, and so we ought to be, because this could evolve immediately overnight into not only a regional conflict, but a worldwide conflict. And it could be the precursor of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because his rapture, I believe, takes place seven years before that final battle. And so it could be. And so what are we expected to do? In this season that we rejoice in, we ought to be telling others about Jesus, preparing for his return, because his return surely is close. The fullness of time, everything was in place. I believe that's where we stand tonight. Everything in place. And Jesus is coming again. Now, for some people, that's a fearful thought. But I assure you tonight, as believers, we ought to take comfort in that. Can you believe that we could be the generation that does not see death, but rather we see him face to face, raptured into his presence? What a glorious thought that is. Lord, we pray tonight that you will continue to bless us as a people and as a church. I pray, Lord, that... Uh, we will look with great expectancy for your return. Even as we celebrate, Lord, your first advent, may we long for and look forward to your second advent. And may you guide us. May we be faithful to you. May we be witnesses of you to a lost and dying world that's in darkness. For we ask and pray these things in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen.